its energy surrounds us and binds us. What's up, Marvel nerds, and welcome back to the Carbonite Convos podcast. If this is your first time joining us, you've just taken your first step into a larger world. And if you have been here before, then we can't thank you enough for coming back for episode 45 of the podcast. Uh, you know, we always love uh, just sitting down, talking some Marvel and Star Wars with you guys. And with a brand new MCU movie, uh, you know, we have a lot to talk about. So the main focus of today is going to be our main man, Shang-Chi. Uh, I'm super excited to get into this movie because I actually just saw it today for the first time. So I- I'm ready to dive in. Alec, how you doing, man? Man, as always, I'm great to be here, dude. You, you, you said it yourself. We had a brand new Marvel movie pop out just you know three days ago now i saw i saw it on release night and it was super super awesome we're gonna you know share our thoughts and really dive into that here in here in a few minutes uh but before we do that you know can't forget to throw the big three out there it's like comment and subscribe hit that bell button while you're at it but you know man I, i'm ready to just go ahead and get in this conversation it's not leave leave them hanging too long uh let's just get our thoughts out there and, and see where it goes sounds good so i texted you right when the movie ended i said holy bleep what a movie. Um, initial thoughts. I loved it. I didn't really know what to think going in because I didn't know a ton about the Mandarin. I knew, I knew kind of the basis that, you know, he was a terrorist. He had these 10 rings. They are thousands of years old, but this movie absolutely blew me away. I thought it was just cinematically beautiful. The fight scenes are, are some that if I could compare them to other fight scenes in the MCU, I'd say they, I compare them a lot to Doctor Strange versus Thanos and in Infinity War. They were sure. just so beautiful to watch. A Not lot of only, slow motion, very, very yes. choreograph, uh, choreographed. Is that the word? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what I was going to mention is, you know, not only the action in the fights, but it almost, you know, specifically the fight between the Mandarin and his wife and the Mandarin and Shang-Chi like you said, it was very chore- choreographed and it almost seemed like a dance. I was sitting there, I'm watching this fight scene and I'm like, holy crap, this is this is gorgeous. I've never seen a fight be so tranquil and, and quiet. You know what I mean? Espe- sure. Specifically the first fight because they're in the middle of the woods. It's, you know, the forest is around them. You have the wind moving, the leaves, the water. I just thought, you know, from the from the moment it started, I was I was hooked. Sure. I mean, it's interesting you say that because like, if you think about it, that's how the martial arts in general are. They're very, not slow, but very controlled and delicate and delicate movements. I mean, dude, to be completely honest, in that scene where um, for what's her name? Uh, Ying Ying Li. Yeah. Was it again? Ying Li. Um, And she's like doing it, controlling the water around her and stuff. I look over at my sister who I saw with, I'm like, Oh my God, she's a waterbender. Like, (laughs) um, again, just talking about that, that, that the martial arts, how they can control the environment around them. I want to know, like, are are all these people that live in the, in this Talo Talo, um, are they given these abilities when they're born or only do only some acquire them? Is it like a, exactly do they do they do they learn it like what what fighting style all there's a lot of questions that are um brought to the light when you're really looking at the people and i and i definitely need to see this movie again because yeah um you know you you said your first thoughts were you were blown away with it right away and to be completely honest man i liked the movie i did i thought it was a very good movie i heard people come out and say oh this is my top five you know this is one of my favorites and I was a little bit underwhelmed. I don't know if I went in expecting too much or or what, but I I I, I take a I go away from it not the happiest with it. And again, I like the movie. I'd watch it again. It's a Marvel movie. I absolutely love it. And, and there's a lot of setup in it. So I have a feeling that maybe a year or two from now I might go back and be like, okay, things make a lot more sense. I enjoy this a lot more now. Um Going off of that really quick, I think that's how a lot of people felt about the and, you know, still kind of feel about some of the origin stories that we've seen in Marvel so far, like the first Iron Man, first Thor. When you go back and you see how it connects, Mm -hmm. it, I don't know, becomes more favorable. I really like the characters um, that we were introduced to. Obviously, Shang-Chi was great. Katie was hilarious. I I thought she was hilarious. Oh, yeah. No, she was funny. And I was going in 
and I haven't heard the greatest things about Aquafina. I just heard mm-hmm. that she's kind of like annoying, but so I kind of went into it with this, I guess, preconceived prejudice against not prejudice. That's not the word, but like, I thought like, based on what I have heard, I thought she was going to be very annoying. Sure. But then I watched the movie. I was like, man, I actually really like her character. You know who um, she reminds me a lot of? Oh, Darcy? Darcy Lewis from the first Thor. Yeah, but not she's Darcy funny. from WandaVision. No, they very much redeemed her character. But, but Darcy she's actually from funny. Thor. I think that's the difference, you know? Right. Like, exactly. Katie's exactly. actually that's, funny. That's what I was expecting it to kind of be like. Mm-hmm. But then obviously, like she's able to hold her own, like the scene with the arrow. Through yeah, the, that was crazy. The neck, that was insane. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that down down here in a minute. But um, obviously, we were introduced to Wen Wu. Um, Ying Li, and then the other one as well as Shai, Shai Ling. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, you well, know, going off, off, overall good characters. I also really liked Razor Fist, and yeah. um, I was I was dis- disappointed he's not going to be used more. He wasn't used more, but he obviously will be move, uh, used more going forward. My biggest disappointment of the entire movie was the Death Dealer. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. He, he see was him around like- for like three minutes. Yeah, and then um, and, I, and again, I I know we're big Funko Pop guys. I don't know if people listening you bought are, the pop. but well, I got the pop for like two cents, so yeah. like I'm fine with it. Yeah. But to me, like to the be fact that it was an exclusive, as a pop, was... exclusive, like oh, this this dude's gonna be pretty cool. After like researching the comics, and I could be wrong here, but the Death Dealer was supposed to be his brother, like Shang Chi's. Um, it's supposed to be one of Shang Chi's brother, the son of Wen Wu. Um, really that's awesome yeah and so i don't know if they replaced uh that with jai ling i don't know if jai ling was, his, was her own character beforehand or not I, i'm yeah. not sure um and i obviously and i really like the direction that they're going with her which we'll, we'll dive into a little oh bit yeah later but um you know not taking anything away from her at all because it, it's no disrespect to her but i was just very underwhelmed by by the death dealer um, that's in the last two movies they've done that where they give us this masked villain where you mm-hmm. think they're going to play a significant part with the death dealer and taskmaster you know like i was underwhelmed like you said with taskmaster from black widow because it's and i would i don't want to say iconic because taskmaster isn't an iconic villain but it is a main villain in Marvel. classic just a classic yeah, it's a villain. classic villain and now it's almost like how we got the Mandarin in Iron Man three, you know, where we right. were kind of robbed that experience to see their abilities in action, you know, mm-hmm. um, kind of going off what you were saying earlier, though, about being underwhelmed for the film as a whole. I guess where I see it differently is, I, you know, I did see a couple people say, you know, this is my favorite Marvel movie. It's top five. I did see those same things, but I had a couple friends reach out to me. Um, which I, I hate that I was I wasn't able to see it opening night. I just had things just come up that I couldn't get around. But um, I saw it today, and the thing I kept hearing was, you know, this is something. This is brand new stuff. This is MCU like we've never seen it before. And I think that's the theme in Phase, phase four. four. We go sure. from. WandaVision, where it blew our minds. We had no clue what was going on. Falcon Warner Soldier was a little more of what we know, but touched on real world issues, which we haven't seen come to fruition in the, in the MCU that precisely. And then you go into Loki and, you know, the multiverse is opening. You're dealing with more magic. You're dealing with variants, different timelines, to- more time travel. And then you go to Shang-Chi where... You, you, I, it's not magic, but it's more mystical. You know, it, like we're dealing, we're dealing with ancient creatures. Um, I, I love mystical I, is a good way to put it. Yeah. It, it, we're getting away from a little, it's not earthly. It, it's not as earthly as we've known. And I think that's the direction of the MCU moving forward. We're getting more, we're getting more mystical. We're getting more magical, but th- I think this movie just kind of cracked the MC, MCU open even more. Sure. And I like that you brought up magic because we got to talk about Wong and yes. what he was doing. Yes. What one, what he, what was he doing with abomination in general mm-hmm. fighting him Two, where did they go? Yes. Where did they go? Like what? Where did they I go? Was- why, why is there not a, a friend, a friendship there? Like, I, I don't understand what was happening. Like he seemed very calm about it. What I, what I'm confused, and I'm just kind of thinking of this now. All right, so Abomination and Hulk, mm-hmm. 
big foes, big, big enemies. Sure. We've seen that in the MCU already. Now we've seen Wong with Abomination. And like you said, it wasn't, there didn't seem to be animosity. You know, they were fighting, but it, it wasn't, wasn't like a, a villain. No, it wasn't it, like a, it was, it wasn't a good him. and a bad. Exactly. Like he's like, come on. We talked about it. Like, and then he goes off. It's like, he's training it, him more, but it, oh, it's weird. Cause the room, it looked like there was like bars, like maybe like a jail cell of some sort. Yes. Back there. I don't know. It was weird. So Wong and Abomination clearly have a relationship. And then in the post credit scene, which we'll get to this more in depth later, but then we see Bruce is, is contacting Wong again. So Wong is here with Abomination. Wong is also here with Bruce. What's the, is there any, like, you think that would come up in, in conversation? Like, Do hey, you Wong, th- you know, I beat the hell out of that guy uh, like a decade ago. <laughs> right. It's, it's we, And we're getting more abomination moving forward. It's we've already been told that abomination will be in future films. Mm-hmm. So is he going to be a villain? It, it, I don't know what what I'm interested about is how Wong was. Do you think he was acting differently in this than he has in the past? I think, you think the his only character difference was he got different. drunk, man. I think that was the only difference that we see him get drunk with Shang Chi and Katie. But I, I, I didn't think it. I didn't think it was that different. I think maybe he's stepping more into a leadership role. Maybe I don't know. I just I, I felt like he was kind of off, and it's kind of the same. I think might be the same kind of feelings people are getting about Doctor Strange in the Spider Man trailer. Like, yo, he just seemed kind of different in some capacity well he also got blipped away snapped away for five years so i think right whatever the reason is there's some difference in the character good or bad we don't know what we will find out but there is a difference in the personality even if it's just a little bit well yeah i don't think it's a bad thing at all though because he's more of an avenger now you know, like he's not, he's, I don't Wong. Yeah. He's not an Avenger. He's not an Avenger, but, but he's, he's more of an Avenger now because he's right. no longer just guarding the sanctum. Right. It's clear that he's in communication with captain Marvel, Bruce Banner. I assume well, I was about to everyone, say Cap, whoever that's, else dude. every, yeah. There, it's clear that the Avengers, uh, you know, the ravagers, the sorcerers, all these people, they have to stay in contact now because, there's huge world ending threats out there now many more threats yeah so i want to know like what the deal is i i i I didn't think wong was out of character i think he's just growing and sure he's having to take that leadership role clearly since there's something going on with strange too right there's something something weird's going on especially after this latest episode of what if there's some interesting things happening with him so yeah so we'll, we'll we'll see what happens with that while we're while we're talking about it real quick and we can come back to things um i want to talk about the the post credit with with banner okay yes i'm confused how is he not why is he not professor hulk Hulk? dude i genuinely genuinely believe we will see savage hulk again yeah, we we have to we have to, and especially now think, that they're separated. Do you think that it will be where he's not able to be in control at all, like it used to be? And I will don't he know. be? Because we saw him, we saw Hulk grow up in Ragnarok, mm. so mm. he it seems like Hulk can control himself. Maybe not quite as intense, and less. But at the end of the day, you got to go back to what Hulk is all out. Like the more pissed off he is, the stronger he is. Yeah. So I can only imagine true savage hulk if he ever came out would be uncontrollable i think if the situation depended on it like think about let's go back to ultron when when scarlet witch got in his head he was unstoppable unstoppable (laughs) yeah man oh man if and that wasn't even a world-ending threat that was just her playing a little mind game like what if galactus what if kang what if whoever these Literally, world-ending threats are come anywhere in the vicinity of Earth. Is Hulk not going to do anything about it? It was interesting seeing him in, in Infinity War and stuff, like him not coming out. But that was because they had beef between the two. Hulk's main deal is that Hulk will not let Banner die. At the end well, of the day, probably because if Banner dies, Banner he dies. Die. Exactly. If Banner dies, he dies. So Hulk will not let him die. If there's these threats coming out, Hulk will do what he has to do. To keep Banner alive. If it's Savage Hulk coming out, he'll do it. Dude, that's gonna oh my gosh, that's gonna be awesome. 
That's going to be awesome. I'm still just seeing Banner. I was just thrown off like right. like hell. I'm I, I I don't even know what to think. I'm I think the more surprising thing is that Katie is going to be kind of like a new superhero. I did not expect that from this character. Uh uh-uh. uh no, because she's regular. She's good with a bow, I guess. But yeah, that was the only thing. Also, is like it's cool that she found a a talent or a skill, but it's like mm-hmm. man, she got very accurate very quick. I mean, I guess you could say the th- same thing about Hawkeye. We don't know that though. Like Maybe we didn't. You, I'm sure he had years training. of experience. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm true. Saying. That's true. Plus, he's trained by the best in the world, and Katie was trained for like a day and a half by exactly. She even. I'm sure it. he was one of the best in the world as well. But a, like a day, like what are you going to learn in a day? Yeah, um, I don't know. I really did like the ant same, quote. came in coop, super clutch though. Absolutely oh, yeah. super clutch. N- not the ant quote. The the older lady. I really liked her quote. How she was like, "You'll never hit anything if you don't aim." Sure. Yeah, yeah I like, really like. What what else stood out to you? Um, all right. Well, let's see. I'm trying to go, bro. Let me tell you this. We I had five teenagers sitting behind me. I ended up having to tell them, like in the middle of the movie, I had to say, like, "Yo, will you guys stop talking?" They're sitting behind us and they would not stop talking. Little little punks. Um, one of them's wearing a Yankees jersey, so I wasn't surprised. But they scum. were just, you know, that scum. They were just, dude, they're kicking chairs. They were just just being just disrespectful. And it got to a point I had to turn around and say, like, yo, stop talking. Like that's interesting. Dude, my theater was empty. Really? There was maybe nine people total in like a 100 person theater. Yeah. No, I get that. Um, going going back to the movie. And this is kind of going off abomination. Remember when they when Shang Chi, Katie, and what's his sister's name again? Shai Shai Ling. Shai Ling. How you how you Shai say Ling. It? When they get put in the in the dungeon and we're hearing that noise, mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be Wong and Abomination because I knew Wong showed up. I knew Wong was in the movie more, and we're mm-hmm. hearing this weird ass noise. Uh, and the the same thing you said. It looked like it was a prison slash dungeon that Wong took abomination to. Mm-hmm. So when I'm hearing this noise, I was like, oh shoot, we're gonna see abomination again. Even better, we got Trevor. I thought Dude, he was hilarious, man. He was great. was great. What was that little the little thing he, animal that he was like Nor Norris? Norris, I think is what he called I him. Can't, I can't remember, but the, he was great. Dude, the fact that they said, what is that thing? He's like, what is what thing? They're like, that. He's like, that's real? I thought I've been, <laughs> I thought I've been hallucinating it the whole time. Whatever his accent is. Dude. Dude, I thought was that good. was awesome, man. Like, Absolutely. He, he brought even more like comedic influence to this that I, I didn't know we, we needed. It was called a Dijang, um, uh, the actual the, animal. The, Norris. Yeah. Going oh, off gotcha, of that, gotcha. I love how many ancient and like how many creatures from like Chinese mythology that mm-hmm. they brought into this. Like it was, it was awesome. Like the lion looking beautiful. thing. Yes. Yes. Super dude. cool. It was beautiful, man. The dr- like, dude, the dragon, the dragon was, the dragon awesome. was a bad ass. That was, to be honest, that was one of my favorite parts of the movie Um, was seeing the scene where Shang Chi is in the water, like he's obviously sinking, like he's not dying, yeah, but he's sinking. And all of a sudden, the face comes up, and they're just looking eye to eye. And I'm like, "That's yeah. unreal." They made yeah. the connection. What? What? It, what was it? The mom said at the very beginning, like, "If you have the heart of the dragon, you'll never truly die," or or something, something like that. Remember. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I really um, want to fu- watch it again, man. I know I need to as well. Did you notice? Right before they showed the, like when Shang Chi got and Katie got to this place, um, I forget what it was called. Um, right before they showed Wong and Abomination fighting, there was a couple people fighting in like a smaller cell, like a glass cell. I know what you're gonna say, dude. He had the the, the glowing stuff Iron Man from 3. Iron Man Three. Yes. yes, I'm glad you saw it too. I, I'm I glad noticed you it right saw away. That. I'm like, yo, 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 yo. Like, I know. I nudged, I nudged my buddy because Chava went with me, and I was like, yo, yo, that's the stuff from Iron Man 3. Mm-hmm. I'm, glad, I'm so glad you saw it yeah. as well. Because like, it, was, it was different 
it was like glowing and moving and like i'm like that's there's no way it's anything else it looked the it looked the exact, exact same. same yes exact same so i'm I curious awesome. if there if there's any way that uh that killian could be brought back in no, anyway i don't think so i think I, he's dead but the technology is still there mm-hmm. that's uh, true because i get because they, they didn't it. they didn't get everybody that they experimented no. and tested on but also if you think about it, the the thought like the idea is a good idea trying to regenerate cells and like if you're able to do it in a way that doesn't you know cause that intense pain and it and explosions yeah like all this like if if it's able to become like a medical benefit if if it's able to help people grow back their limbs like why not but yeah right when i noticed that it took me a second but i was looking and then i I made the connection. I was like, hell yeah, that's awesome. Talk about how many Iron Man three callbacks there a were. Lot. It was incredible. Absolutely. It was insane because we hear the Mandarin talking about Trevor and I'm, I'm sitting there nudging Chava and my girlfriend. I'm like, Oh, he's talking about it. I was like, he's talking about Trevor. So I thought that was, I thought that was really cool. I think another thing that Marvel did was make you understand the villain. Mm-hmm. You know, cause the Mandarin, I, and when in when Wu, yes, when Wu, man, I, so you understand wh- why you know, not the first thousand years where he's going around just pillaging villages and burning crap to the ground, but mm-hmm. the later years of his life when he's trying to bring his wife back, you they really make you feel for him because sure, it was interesting because I, I liked hearing when Wu talk about. <sighs> I, I'm going to try, try to say it as close to how as as close to how he said it as possible. But he was talking about Killian, um, and I'm no, I'm sorry. He was talking about uh, Trevor. No, who called Killian called himself the Mandarin. No, Trevor. No, did. No, Trevor. no, 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 no. But who was Killian put him up to it? Yes, yes. But Killian called himself the Mandarin. Like whatever. That's not the point I'm getting at. I liked listening to him talk about killing, but like, you know, this man had to use my rings, my, the, my, my stories, my legend to strike fear into the heart of America. Um, yeah. No, I, and that's the part I was just talking about. Right. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, but it was also interesting because when Wu, and I think I got my hopes up for him way too high. I was disappointed in the character. Really? Um not like the emotion behind, like, you know, like you said, like, yes, you felt for him, but I don't think they are done with the Mandarin. And, you know, that brings up, brings up this theory um, that I've been thinking about that with that second post credit scene, that Shai Ling is going to be the true Mandarin. They, they one they, I think they under, under delivered on Wen Wu on purpose to set her up. If you look at phase four, every, every villain that they've set up to this point, they've done, and it, not an issue, like I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, that they've either done a gender swap, a new origin story. Um, they, they've completely changed their comic accurate story yeah. into, a, into a new uh, streamlined story. Um, just like how with Taskmaster, she was obviously different. I think Shai Ling is being set up to be the true Mandarin of the MCU um, just because they're, they're, she's obviously building a dynasty. Now she has Razor Fist and all his, all his henchmen working for her, it seems like. I, could, I got a feeling, I had a feeling the entire time that she was going to be a villain. Mm-hmm. I personally, throughout it, I thought that she was going to stop and join her father by the mm-hmm. end and kind of turn. So I was surprised when she didn't, because especially with the color scheme, you know, with with foreshadowing and symbolism, the fact that she was wearing black the entire mm-hmm. movie, I thought that I was like, OK, she's definitely I think she's going to turn. And then when she gets when they both get their suits or um, their, their the dragon armor, scales. Yeah. When they get that, she's she wears white. I was like, I, I started thinking, OK, maybe she's maybe I was wrong. I was and then she puts overlooking the black it. back on. Exactly. And then we get the post credit scene where she, she says, let's get started. Um, Build an so empire. I, yeah. Because, you know, if she couldn't be a part She's of She's going to be the Tremander because she's build her when, own. in the comics, bro, when Wu is 
vicious. way more vicious, way more deadly, way more overall evil. The Mandarin yeah. is an evil entity. And they kind of showed him in a lighthearted nature. Like at the, at the end of the day, the one move from this movie wanted to do good things. Except, and it was, and it was based in the it, beginning, but it, but, but it, it was based on love after he found their mother. Yeah. Um, like he had a change of heart. The Mandarin doesn't have a change of heart. No. What do you mean? Like, no, he wants to rule everything. And that, that to me, that's just, it just seems what she is going to become. No, I agree. Um, what do you think of this quote universe that they're in right now? Because it, Taylor or Tylo, uh, what, Ta- yeah, Tallo, Tallo. Ta- How? What do you think this is? Where are they? Because she talks about a portal, mm-hmm. which you know, when I was watching it, I kind of pictured it a lot like Wakanda, where it was wasn't more of a, like like a hidden different in plain sight. universe. I thought it was more hidden, right? But you know, my buddy made a good point. She says portal, which begs the question: Are they transporting somewhere else? Like, I'm, I don't think world. I don't think they're leaving. I think the the town, the city, I don't know what you want to call it, the village of Taylor village. is is hidden. I think it's world. on Earth still. It's on Earth still. Absolutely. I, to me, what the portal was was what they blocked and sealed off. Um, that there's por- a portal to this ancient. D- dimension i don't know if it's a dimension yeah, or yeah. if it kind of works like like uh like middle earth type of thing where like kind of yeah like you ever, see, you ever seen the the, you ever seen world. um journey to the center of the earth yeah yeah kind of like that how it like there's layers and the, and like you work down through the earth's core and stuff like that that to me that's what it seemed like no i get that i get that i don't know it, i was very intrigued by it um it was also kind of just crazy those creatures that were coming and taking the souls eating the souls people, literally and delivering them, them to this, this dragon yes exactly going back to the dragon you know going back to funko pops i w- when i was watching it th- i wasn't going to get the dragon i wasn't going to get a lot of shang chi pops because they looked kind of i don't know kind of boring to be honest mm-hmm. but after seeing the movie the first thing that dragon i was like that's so shoot, dope i gotta get the dragon now <laughs> Are you gonna get the dragon? Um, I don't think I'm gonna get the dragon. I've already picked up a Shang Chi, and I got the Death Dealer for literally like a penny. Yeah. Um, I saw them all today. Cause, like, because Ga- GameStop somehow gave me money. It was weird. I don't know what happened, but I got a free pop out of it. So whatever. Yeah. Um, I definitely I want, want Shai Ling, and I want Razor Fist. See, I want like the main characters. Like, I, mm-hmm. I want Katie. I want Shang Chi. I I saw Shang Chi today. But I want the one of him like kicking With the kicking. water. Mm-hmm. I want that mm-hmm. one. Um, I want Jai Ling. I want uh, the Mandarin. I want him as well. I want their mom. I want Razor Fist. Like I'm surprised Razor Fist because I saw the pop. I just I couldn't spend twelve bucks. On I that. see my my collecting Plus, momentum yeah. is I collect a hero, one of at least one of every hero, and I want one of every villain. Yeah, and obviously Jai Ling's being set up to be a villain, so I need her. And Razor Fist is obviously a villain as and well, and he's and he's yeah. gonna and he's gonna be he's gonna be back. There's no way they're gonna not bring him back. I'm just um, surprised on the pop that it doesn't have any orange on it because the sword is just yeah. all gray. So I was thinking when I do get this, I I'm gonna get like an orange marker or like, like a highlighter pen. Yeah, something that will make it just have that orange glow, to, not an actual glow, but some orange luminescence to it. Sure. You know. Sure. Um, yeah, I saw most of the pops today. I just, dude, I couldn't spend the money. Like no. I did. Like I had four pops in my hand. One of them was the Death Dealer, Razor Fist, and uh, Jai Ling. No, it was Katie. Sorry. And then Gamora from What If? Because I, I have a section to put her in. And I was like, I cannot spend fifty bucks on these pops. Right. I, I just can't do that. I gotta wait for him. But yeah, that dragon, I gotta get it. Uh, and I've seen it, but I, I gotta find it. Um, because sure. man, that was, it was just an awesome movie, man. So I, I see where you're coming from, where you saw a lot of people say it was the best, best we've seen in a long time. And it, it all, you know, this and that, but the way I saw it, this is brand new stuff from the MCU, man. I left that theater a hundred percent satisfied. 
Right. And I, I was not dissatisfied at all. Um, you know, it's, it's not the best. It's not the worst I've ever seen uh, as far as the MCU order goes. You know, nothing will ever top some of our favorites. Yeah. Um, but, you know, good. Overall, good. Like, I'm not taking anything away from it whatsoever. No. Like, go see the movie. Like, go see the movie. See it one or two times, however many times you want. It, it's worth it. It's still a Marvel movie. We're still being set up for some really cool things. And we're getting an origin story. Like, origin stories are supposed to be on the slower side. Um, yeah a lot of trauma is built and you know, obviously stories are built through trauma. So go see the movie overall, sir. So getting off of that, um, definitely go see Shang-Chi. Great movie. Go see Shang-Chi going off of that. Let's get into the most recent episode of what if, and our boy, Dr. Strange. So have you seen this theory about the eye of Agamotto in the no way home trailer at all? No, lay it on me. All right. So, Clearly, you know, the time stone was destroyed in the Infinity War endgame period. Uh, so people are always are all wondering why Strange is wearing the Eye of Agamotto in the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. So I've seen two theories that are very interesting. So the first is that Strange is wearing a decoy Eye of Agamotto. So pretty much since most people, beings, villains, since they don't know the Infinity Stro- Stones were destroyed, he's wearing it. So people still think that it's a thing, just kind of like just right, because the, gen- the general bad guy doesn't know that the Infinity Stones were destroyed or exactly. what they really even are. So it's a way to keep some intimidation. Exactly. Um, and then the second theory is that he's wearing a different eye of Agamotto. So I didn't know this, but Agamotto made three different eyes in the comics. One was for truth. One was for power. And what was one was for Presence, I think is how you describe it, which is pretty much knowing what's going to happen before it actually happens. So, so that would make must- sense if he was wearing that one in yes. Endgame. Yes. So he's either wearing, well, and he possibly, he's and either favorite. wearing a fake eye with nothing in it, or he's wearing a different one eye of the other two. Yeah. Sure. Cause they don't have to have the time stone in it then, right? No, no. And Interesting. going off of that, dude, this whole what if episode was unbelievable wild personally wild. i think that we see the time stone just like kind of like cinch it's mm-hmm. like it burned out all the green and we just see it and start glowing red like it was truly it was kind of like a lightsaber like if you like the, the you stone was the bled. kyber crystal yeah yeah it, so it there's i think there's a possibility that the time stone we saw and what if is the time stone that is the stone that might be in Spider-Man No Way Home. I could be wrong, but really good chance. There's a very good chance. Um, dude, that that episode was nuts. It was great. You know, while we're while we're talking about No Way Home, because obviously yeah. we could talk about that for days. Have you heard this theory about what's going on with Andrew Garfield's character? No. Well, so, I know he might. I hopefully he'll pop up, but that's hopefully he's in the I movie. Know. But so I'm going to explain it like this. Okay. Topher Grace. That was Tobey Maguire's Venom. Okay. Okay. Tom Hardy in, in timeline order with, with Sony, Tom Hardy would technically be Andrew Garfield's Venom. Okay. Why? But th- because he's in this Sony universe. Like, okay. Okay. In, no, in, makes in, the, Andrew, makes in, the, in the Andrew Garfield universe, like there would be no, nothing, you know, there'd be nothing like keeping them together because it's on opposite coasts of the country. Yeah. Which will feed into the theory that he will become Tom Spider-Man because this whole new Sony Spider-Verse actually will be taking place in Andrew's universe. Okay. So Andrew is the Spider-Man of mm-hmm. this whole- of this universe, but Tom will be living in this universe. Tom Holland? Tom Holland will so be the Spider-Man in so Andrew Garfield's over? universe. Right. That is that is the rumor and the, that's the theory. So what you're saying is that Tom's Spider-Man mm-hmm. is going – saying he's moving away from the MCU into Sony, mm-hmm. he'll pretty much switch timelines? He'll basically just – again, I don't know the answer to this, but the, the, the rumor is that he will be – this the, the whole event of all the Sony Spider Verse will be taking place technically in Andrew Garfield's universe. Huh. 
So all these villains that are coming to the MCU are from Andrew's universe. So you're saying that the Doc Ock we're getting isn't from Toby's universe? Isn't from from Toby's universe. He's from Andrew's. Well, that kind of sucks because we're going to... Dude, if we get the the Green Goblin from Andrew's universe, Mm -hmm. people are going to be pissed. Well, I don't know because that, again... That might might not necessarily even be Green Goblin. That could be Hobgoblin. That could be it. Could be New Goblin. It, it depends. There's there's a whole lot of options. Um, because we it's we nuts. never if, if they if they aren't from Andrew's universe and they are in fact from Toby's. If Doc Ock and Green Goblin are from Toby's, it can't be Green Goblin because we saw him die. He is dead. We never saw Doc Ock truly die. I mean, yeah, but we saw. We didn't watch him die, but we saw what seemed to be his death. You know, right. like I, th- I still think the Green Goblin that we're getting in No Way Home is Willem Dafoe's. There's a very good chance. And if it is Willem Dafoe and Doc Ock, just like I said, that is the, the Willem Dafoe variant from Andrew's universe. Damn. Dude. And, and, and a timeline where, you know, there's, there's the rumor that we may not be getting the other Spider-Man that all these villains are from the universe where the Spider-Man of said universe has died and they've come to this one. Um, And there's also the evidence that like, there could be the fact that like all the villains are flip-flops. So like the Doc Ock and the Green Goblin are from Andrew universe, the Electro, the Lizard, the Sandman are from Andrew. um, I'm sorry, the Electro and the Lizard are from Toby's universe and vice versa. Huh. Um, so like they're flip-flopping all the villainous roles and that they're coming together and, and basically need help. Yeah. The only thing I'm not excited for moving forward for the MCU, and it's it's kind of one of those bittersweet things because I am excited for it, but on one mm-hmm. hand, I'm not excited for the repercussions because after so many years, I understood so much of the MCU. It's like, all of the dots connected. It all made sense. Like if and someone now, were to walk up to you and be like, hey, I don't understand how, Yes, you know, I, where, I, where does like, this villain come from? Like, oh, well, he was introduced way back. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, you don't want to get me started. But now it's like with time travel, multiverse, variants, everything, it's so hard to understand everything, you know, and just keep up um, sure. and catch all the Easter eggs. But, you know, before we wrap it up here tonight – Let's finish off. Let, let's bring it back to Doctor Strange because I do. I did see one more thing that I really want to bring up to you. So, have you seen the theory about who is actually this Doctor Strange in the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer? No. Uh, so I'm sure you've seen that it's Mephisto, um, but that's not who I'm going <laughs> to say. So clearly, everybody's thrown off right now about Doctor Strange in this trailer. You know his actions, his demeanor. Everything just seems a little off from how we've seen him develop in the MCU so far. Um, So a lot of people think that it might be Mephisto or a variant of Doctor Strange. But the theory is that the Doctor Strange in the trailer is actually Mystique from Fox's X-Men universe. Really? And it kind of connects because we've already gotten a confirmation. Well, not a confirmation. We've gotten a huge leak that Wanda will fight and have a beautiful fight with someone from the Fox verse from X-Men. So where it connects is that at the end of WandaVision, we see Wanda reading the dark hold and we hear her kids yelling out for her. So apparently sometime in between there and now we get Wanda convinces mystique to take on the form of Dr. Strange. So Mm. she can get access to the sanctum, get access to the multiverse to find her kids in the multiverse. Wow. I don't know how, how exactly wild. I know. I don't know Whoa. how exactly she'll do it, but that's why Mystique waits for Wong to leave. That's why she doesn't have as firm of a grasp on magic that Doctor Strange does. So that's how it's much it's able to get out of hand a lot a lot easier. Wow, I know that's interesting. What well, I saw it like kind of a meme, but not really like this. The Spider Man is going to be focusing on all the Sony Marvel characters and that Doctor Strange is going to be focusing on all the Fox Marvel characters and how they're going to get t- tied back into the MCU. That's nuts, man. The future is bright. Dude, it's super bright. Jeez. So 
any any more thoughts before we wrap it up here? I know you, I know you got a big uh, fantasy draft tonight. <laughs> hey, hey, kickoff Thursday, homie. I we know. The, uh, Let's go, Bucks, baby. Go, Bucks, baby. We got we got the Cowboys week one. So prime should time, be a, baby. Should be a, should be a W time. Thursday prime night time. football. I got I got to work during it, but you know that's okay. Oh, it, yeah. it is what it is. Um, yeah, go. I don't know, man. I'm pumped for that. But Let's go back no, to back. You know, that'd be nice. Make make it two nice. teams. Two teams. Yeah, but the where's my ring? Uh, oh, never mind. Um, but you know, just to end it on, my main thing, guys, go see Shang Chi. Go see it. It's great. It's a good movie. Um, the other thing to think about too, go see it because you know they're they're doing this test run of of this exclusive in theater window that if people don't go see this movie, they're going to delay other stuff until until they feel like they can make the money they need to make off of it. I've always been a firm and I still am a firm backer of Disney. Um, but man, it seems like, you know, holding release dates until people see the movie in theaters, all this stuff. It's like, like, I get right. it. I get it. It all comes down to money, man. But yeah, guys, thank you for joining us for episode 45. Like Alex said, go see Shang-Chi. You won't regret it. And then you can come back, watch our podcast, and you can let us know your thoughts. Um, you can connect with us on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, Carbonite Combos everywhere. We're in the we're in the process of starting up a new, a new Instagram as well. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but we got a whole slew of videos coming out this week. Our Revenge of the Sith Funko Pop list did have to get delayed um, a couple days. And we have some awesome news about our Funko Pop lists coming out soon. We have big things in the work for them. And what's good about this announcement is that they are truly already in the works. It's not some, It's not an idea anymore. It is It is happening. It is confirmed. So please uh, you know, just stay tuned for those lists because we have a lot of exciting things coming with a lot of different creators that I know you guys are going to like. But we got a lot of stuff for you this week with the Funko Pop list, the What If Reaction. Uh, next week you can catch us for episode 46. But until then, guys... May the force be with you. Remember, the force will be with you. Always. <laughs>